Night Hunting Pop Quiz When are you most likely to see predators? That's right, at night. How do I know, you ask? Would you believe I've spent years studying predators? Nope, I have a trail camera. Modern technology is great. Midway USA was having a sale on trail cameras one spring, so Clay and I figured if we were going to have our own TV reality show, we should have a couple of these. We figured cameras could save us a lot of wandering around, looking under rocks, behind trees, searching for the wily critters on hot, sweaty summer days. And, since we haven't figured out how to mount a live video feed on Clay's radio control airplane yet, trail cameras seemed the best option. We tried placing our cameras in different locations, but the best place to capture nighttime action was in the fig trees near our Uncle Kenny's cabin. The fig trees have long been a favorite gathering place for the local wildlife at night. So we strapped the cameras to some fig tree trunks and pointed them toward high traffic areas. Any motion would trip the camera and you can record single or multiple pictures or video as desired. Sweet! After a night or two, we drive up and download the pictures onto a laptop computer and see who was prowling about. We got several pictures of my cousin Rex picking figs and more pictures of the local bovine population milling about smartly. One cow, we called number nine, per her ear tag, was particularly troublesome. She had a strong affinity for figs and would follow us around like a pet dog until we shook a limb, knocking ripe figs to the ground for her to eat. She and her pals were in most of our pictures and ate most of the bait, until Rex fenced them out. Thank you, Rex. But most of the pictures were of hogs and coyotes, and the occasional bear making a midnight run for Fig Newtons. More astonishing, we were scanning the download images one morning and discovered a mountain lion had been walking through the trees the night before. Wow! I have never seen a live cougar in the wild. I showed my cousin Rex the picture of the lion, figuring he ought to know there was one lurking about since he lived close by in his cabin. He kind of freaked out. He changed his habit of walking up the creek to his dad's cabin every morning. He started using the road instead. Go figure. Rex competes with the cows, hogs, birds, deer, bears for the figs by picking as many as he can eat. He sun dries them, chops them up, and presses them with my grandpa's old letter press into fig paste blocks. Afterwards, he wraps the blocks in plastic for storage. They bear an uncanny resemblance to what you see the DEA SWAT teams unloading from a luxury yacht fuel tank off the coast of California. Hmm. I usually pick a couple of boxes of figs for my mother, who makes fig jam. These figs ripen twice a year, each summer, and bring in the herbivores, which in turn brings in the predators. Based on what we were seeing on our trail cameras, and after seeing how quickly our bait hogs disappear from the coyote kill zone overnight, we decided to set up a night blind and catch the gluttonous offenders wolfing down the carcass du jour. It so happens there's a perfect spot, a rock pile 100 yards from the kill zone, which absorbs our silhouette while sitting on the leeward side. At night, thankfully the wind is blowing against our backs. Otherwise, we'd be retching constantly, which scares the coyotes away. We sit in lawn chairs behind an old shooting bench we made from a plastic basketball backboard with scrap metal legs. Thanks, Walmart. We usually sit up at dusk, so we have just enough light to get situated, and it's another 45 minutes to an hour before we start seeing activity. For illumination, we've evolved a little bit from the days of unwieldy seal beams with coil cords plugged into a vehicle's cigarette lighter. Now, we use lightweight, handheld LED flashlights. The white lights will illuminate animals out to 200 yards and eyes much further. 
The red lights are good to about 100 yards. On a typical scan, depending on the amount of moonlight, we'll start scanning with a night vision device and an infrared light, or a red LED flashlight. Both pick up eyes very well, and that's what you want to see. Then you decipher the nature of the beast behind the eyes. Calf, cat, coyote. It's important not to shoot cattle, as it upsets the ranchers. Each type of animal stands and moves distinctly. It takes years of practice to discern the subtle differences. Or, you could just buy the handy pocket-sized flashcards we sell for nineteen ninety-five plus shipping and handling. Once the animal is deemed a shooter, put your scope crosshairs on it and your partner hits the white light. You might have to whistle or lip squeak to get a standing shot if the animal is moving. One time, we're sitting in our blind and my hunting partners are discussing some important issue. Shh! This is a hunting blind, not a weenie roast. I flip on my light and scan the bait. Bingo! A pair of eyes are looking directly at me. There's a coyote. Blip, blip. Now we have three flashlights throwing a combined 18 million candle power on the coyote. His pupils contract to the size of hydrogen atoms, and I can smell his fur starting to smolder. The coyote starts moving away as I dial up my scope. I lip squeak a few times. And he stops, staring into the light and blinking like a semaphore in a World War II sea battle. Blam! Dead coyote. When we don't have a bait hog, we move our stand to a tree line near an open field a hundred yards south of the fig trees. This is a great blind when the figs are ripe. There's so much traffic, it reminds me of a Taco Bell on Saturday night. We set up our table and chairs, then hang a camo net up in front of the table to hide any lower body movement. One night, we set up with Mo on the left of me, Clay on the right of me. It wasn't long before. There's one going down the fence toward the figs. Mo, are you on him? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Whistle. He stops and looks back at us. Kablamo! What the heck are you shooting? The 308. Ah, massaging my left ear. The 308? For coyotes? Hello, McFly! The next 45 minutes are only interrupted by the ringing in my ears, the occasional raccoon doing Tarzan swings through the fig trees, and some screaming tropical jungle bird that only comes out at night in California to scare hunters. Dozing, scanning, dozing, scanning. There's a pair of eyes. Off to our right, just this side of the creek. A coyote, looking around. Okay, I'm on him. Hit the white light. Blam! The eyes disappear. After each shot, we walk over and drag the coyote back and place him in the stack. Another 45 minutes. Eyes. Coyote. Mo, you got him? Yeah. White light. Kablamo! This time, I covered my ears. After we drag this one back, it's 2.30 in the morning, so we decide to call it a night. Another time, we're sitting on the dead bait hog site, right as darkness falls. We watch a cow bed down directly across the kill zone from us in our field of fire. So we decide to move about 100 degrees counterclockwise from our position. This means dragging all our gear about 200 yards across the open field over to the creek below the reservoir. We get reset and start waiting. Pretty soon Clay, who's using infrared illumination with a night vision monocular, says, Coyote. I whisper back, tell us when he's at a hundred yards. A few minutes later, don't move. Well, it's not quite pitch black. You can make out slightly different shades of black, only if they're moving. One such moving black patch walks by in front of us, not three yards away. It stops, sits down in front of me, facing away from us, I think. It's hard to tell when you can't see. We are park statues, frozen in time. Nobody wants to spook him. Not sure what he'll do next. I can't believe he doesn't smell us. Especially Mo. 
I don't think she got all that bear smell off of her hands yet. Finally, after a couple minutes, he gets up and nonchalantly leaves in the same direction he came. I ask Clay, what happened to the hundred yard warning? I could have poked that guy in the ribs with my rifle barrel. As we are driving the dirt roads at night, I usually have a light scanning out the window because you'll always catch a pair of eyes. One time, coming home from a coyote blind, we rounded a bend in the road, and I could see eyes down the hill across the creek. Stop. Back up a little. Right there. Coyote. So I get out, walk around the back of the truck to see if I can get the, a rest on the pickup bed for my shot. Wham! I walked right into the shin-high trailer hitch I forgot to take off and put away. <laughs> Must... Shoot, coyote, before I p pass out. Blam, crap, hair trigger, I forgot. Oh, pain. I limp back to the door. I get in, pass out. Another night, Garrett and I drove up to the fig trees to see if we could spot some hogs. Garrett had never killed a hog or hunted at night before. So I drove my pickup out onto the flat above the fig trees, and sure enough, we jumped a herd. Hogs everywhere. For some reason, they don't spook much at night. Probably because they can't see any better in the dark than I can, and they don't want to run into a trailer hitch. A large group runs out of the creek above the fig trees and heads towards our bait site and the safety of the trees beyond. I slam on the brakes. We jump out, guns blazing, just like the wild bunch. I picked out a big one and fired. He takes a couple of steps and drops. Meanwhile, Garrett is shooting like he's at the carnival. Blam! Hog turns left. Blam! Hog turns right. Blam! Hog turns left. The hog finally escapes the illumination of my headlights and makes it to the trees. Or he became dizzy and passed out in the ditch. I don't really know. I get in, turn the truck around, so the lights are shining into the field above the fig trees. There are several hogs out there mucking around in the mud where the water faucet has been left open to irrigate the field. This time Garrett uses his door for a rest and shoots a big sow. We drive over, tie up the hind feet, and drag her over to the bait site, along with the big boar that I killed. Both were too gamey to butcher. Even Rex wouldn't eat one. Night hunting is a blast, except for the mosquitoes and the trailer hitches and the rattlesnakes and that scary-sounding jungle bird. <laughs>